You've seen plenty of dropshipping videos where people show off their sales numbers and then don't actually give anything of value. Those videos always really pissed me off when I was getting started because I never actually learned anything from them and was normally left with more questions than answers. That's why in this video, I'm sharing my $3.2 million Shopify store with you and I'm actually gonna walk through the P&L so you can see how much I was taking home at the end of the day. Then later I'm gonna reveal the brand and then give my honest advice on how I would recommend starting a business like this today. And here you can see the year after we hit 3.2 million in sales, we did a total of about $5 million in sales, which again, was not all profit, but as you can see, our biggest expense by far was our cost of sales, which within that is our print on demand costs, drop shipping, all of our fulfillment and storage for our non print on demand products, Shopify discounts, and refunds, which all said and done came out to about $2.6 million in gross profit. Then scrolling down further, you can see that we had a further expense of about $1.8 million between all of our advertising expenses. So right off the top, looking at the cost of product fulfillment and advertising, we are down to about 800 the other big expenses that we had were our general expenses, which were like our Shopify plan, software fees, independent contractors, which these were like our customer service agents, all of the VAs that we had managing the supply chain and product creation, which all of that together, so this is the advertising costs, general expenses, contractors netted out to about $2.1 million in expenses. So then deducting that number from the gross profit, gives us a total remaining operating income of about $440,000. Now, we still had to pay taxes and other kinds of fees on that, but around 400,000 was our take home profit at the end of the day. Another nice perk that we had is we were using 2% cash back credit cards. So on top of all of these fees, we were making another 2%, which is non-taxable income. This isn't financial advice, consult with your tax advisor before making any decisions, but it's non-taxable. You can look it up, which that added about another 60 or $70,000 to the bottom line. So starting off at $5 million in total sales, we ended up just around 10% of that, which this was on the lower end. There were a lot of ups and downs with this brand. Like for example, during COVID, our supply chain got completely shut down and we ended up having to switch to a new supplier, completely rework the business and the brand. We made some mistakes along the way. Like for example, this was a print on demand brand when we first started. Then we decided to roll out non print on demand products. Like we wanted to offer products that we would source from our own suppliers and then keep them in a warehouse which just added a whole nother level of complexity to it. In hindsight, if I could do this all over again, I would definitely just stick with print on demand. It makes things 10 times easier. It allows me to, even if the margins are slightly lower, it would have allowed me more time to focus on the marketing and new product development rather than getting caught up with like customs and shipping and working with Chinese suppliers and all of that kind of stuff. And now for the big brand reveal, the name of this brand was Yoga Stay and it started out being called Namaste collections uh, originally we weren't able to get that name trademarked because it was too generic but it was yoga stay and it was a print-on-demand apparel brand for yoga lovers we started this a couple of years ago when it first launched it was an ugly site it looked terrible and it was just t-shirts with yoga designs on them all in all it ended up growing to several million dollars per year and we ended up exiting from that company to aggregator called OpenStore. OpenStore, I can't say enough about them. They're a great company that the process of selling to them was extremely smooth. If I had to do it all over again, I would build a print on demand brand and then look to exit to a company like OpenStore who they buy up these Shopify brands and then continue to run them. And we finally made the decision to sell the brand because it got to a point where we felt that in order for it to grow beyond where it was at, one to $5 million a year range, it really needed somebody with like more resources and like more scalability and capital to deploy on it. In the end, we were happy with the offer we got and the overall transition process. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanna learn more about OpenStore. 
They buy Shopify brands of all shapes and sizes, and they even have a new drive program where if you're not quite ready to sell to them, they'll take over your brand and operate it for 12 months and pay you a guaranteed profit while you just do whatever you want, basically. You can go on vacation. You can click the link below to apply to that program if you wanna learn more. And now seeing numbers like this, it can seem great, but honestly, there was a lot of work that went into it. Like to create the first original 50 designs when I first launched Yoga Stay, it took me several weeks to come up with the designs, work with the designers, and then go back and forth until we finalized them into a form that looked good enough to sell on our website. Then once we had the finalized designs, had to upload them to Printify, choose the right mockups, all of that kind of stuff. It is a time consuming project. And then to scale the business, we had to add more and more designs, which equally time consuming and detracts from our ability to work on the ads and focus on our listings on Etsy, Amazon, stuff like that. That's why today, if I were to start another brand like this, I would use something, an AI software. Midjourney, you've seen before, even working with a Midjourney, it's still challenging to come up with design prompts that are good enough to generate designs that'll actually sell. So what I would use is something like WeScale, which is a new software that we're developing that cater towards specifically you, like people that want to start print on demand businesses or grow your existing business. We have taken all of the heartache out of growing those businesses because at the end of the day, it comes down to the number of designs that are high quality that you're able to crank out and deliver to your audience, which one or 50 designs can take a number of weeks. And so I'm gonna show you a demo of how WeScale works. You can go ahead to this website and sign up for the beta if you're interested. So here we are on WeScale's homepage. And as you can see, it's a super simple UI user experience. All you have to do is select the type of print on demand product you wanna create a design for. So there's t-shirts, apparel, canvases. Then I'm just gonna type in the type of designs that I wanna create. So in this case, I'm gonna do ancient mythology t-shirts. And then I just click generate art. And now within a matter of seconds, it created high quality designs that you can see here that are ready to be put onto a shirt. What it's done for us is it already has a model trained on types of designs that sell well on t-shirts. And then it's created those designs, removed the background and upscaled the images so that they're high quality enough to look really good on t-shirts. Right now, this is just an example with eight designs, but it can do hundreds or thousands at a time just with the click of a button. That process alone would have taken me forever to do when I was starting Yoga Stay. All you have to do is you select the designs that you like. The best part, my personal favorite, is it even uploads it to your Printify account. So if I go over to my Printify account, go to my products, you can see all these finished designs are already uploaded into your Printify account and put on the t-shirts and it even sizes them and places it perfectly so that it's centered on the shirt and it's hitting the upper level. Like it centers it perfectly where you would want it to be printed. If you click on one of the products, you see it even generates a product description for you. So it comes up with a creative, just one to two sentence description of your product using your brand name and your brand voice if you give it to it. If you don't have a brand name or anything, then it'll just come up with stuff for you. And once this goes live, it'll be on a per design basis for the pricing, which we don't have the set pricing yet, but what I can guarantee you is it will absolutely be far cheaper than anything out there on the market. Even if you're using Midjourney, if you consider the hours that you're putting into finalizing these designs, this our goal is to make this a no-brainer. And last thing I'll say to anybody who's a naysayer out there about AI and print on demand, like being flooded, print on demand as an industry is booming. More than ever, people are buying these types of apparel. They're moving away from the high end, like name brands. They are moving towards like fast fashion. That's why the print on demand market is growing 20 to 30% year over year. So even as the markets start to get flooded, with AI designs and it seems like there's a ton of products out there, the demand is continuing to grow. You can still stand out in that market by having high quality designs in a niche that people are passionate about and you build a, a real brand around it. And that's what I'm trying to share more about on this channel is how to start brands and not just throwing products up and hoping for the best. So watch this video next about how I use AI to choose niches and create hyper-targeted brands that customers are gonna absolutely love and come back and buy from me again and again and again. Be sure to like and subscribe for more WeScale updates, more AI, print on demand, business news and content. Thanks for watching and watch this video next to see how I choose my niches using AI now.